Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is BFS of a graph and it is an easy level problem. So I was not able to upload, so I was not able to upload videos for the past two days. Uh, so I was not able to upload any videos for the past two days. There has been a lot of things that has been going on. So anyways, let's hope that uh, from now on, we'll again uh, continue the posting streak. And uh, today's problem is a very straightforward and standard problem. But I still believe it should not be easy. It should be at least medium because this is not the very first topic you will study when you start programming. So this is a simple traversal of a graph. And all you have to do is you have to return the BFS traversal of the given graph, right? This is the only task that you have. So the time and space complexity is given like this. The time complexity is B, V plus E. So this is the standard time complexity of a BFS. And that space complexity is O of B because uh, you will be using this uh, to store the visited array as well as your final answer, right? So let us see what is BFS and how we can perform it. So a task for this video will be to know more about BFS and how to write it programmatically, right? Now what BFS is, let me just draw a graph first. So if the nodes are like these, then the graph can be of any type, right? It can have any structure. So let's say this is your graph that has been given to you, right? So now what happens, you will start you will start with this particular node. Let's say this is the first or the zeroth node. Now, when you visit this particular node, you know that these are the immediate, immediate neighbors of your current node, right? So what you will do, you can either push this one first or this one first, right? So let me just also number them so that it is much easier for us to understand. Let's say, let's say this is one, this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 and 13, right? So now when you visit one, after one, you can visit either two or three because both of them are the immediate neighbors. Let's say we visit two, right? And then we visit three. So you see what we do in a DFS is that as soon as I visit two, I will start exploring the neighbors of two, right? So the next neighbor of two is four. One we have already explored, right? So this one we have already explored, but now the next neighbor of two will be four. So this is what we do generally in a DFS. The difference between DFS and BFS is that when you have seen one neighbor of one, you will have to see the other neighbor of one at the same time, right? So now let's say you have visited both of the neighbors of one. So this is visited and this is visited, right? So now what we do, we can take this particular two and try visiting its neighbors. So the neighbors of 2 is 4. So I visit 4. Since I have visited all the neighbors of 1, I have visited all the neighbors of 2. Now I have to visit all the neighbors of 3 because this is the next element, right? So all the neighbors of 3 will be 5 and 6. So I can visit 5 and then 6. So let's say, let's say 4 is now visited, 5 is now visited as well as 6 is now visited. Now I will have to see what is the next element. So the next element in my list is 4. So I need to visit all the neighbors of 4. So all the neighbors of 4 are 7 and 8. So I visit 7 and then I visit 8. I will mark them as visited here. So this is visited and this is visited. Now I will have to move on to the next element. The next element is 5. I have to visit all the neighbors of 5. So that is 9. Right. So at each step. Each step you are seeing that I have a list, right? Let's say I'm starting from the root node. So I visit all the neighbors of root node. So let's say N1 and N2 are the neighbors. Now I take the next element of the list and visit all the neighbors of N1. So let's say this is N11 and then N12 and then N13. So these are all the neighbors of N1, right? Now since I have visited all the neighbors of this one, I take the next element and then visit all of its neighbors, right? So you see this type of traversal or this type of approach must seem familiar to you. What we are doing, whenever we are visiting a new element, we are adding it to the back of the list, right? And we are taking elements one by one from the front of the list. Does this operation seem similar to you? 
This is exactly what we do with a queue. We add to the back and take from the front. So we can take all of the nodes in a queue and then perform this traversal. So the traversal is very simple. You just have to push the first element into the queue and then you traverse all of its neighbors and push it back into the queue. So queue.push neighbors. Right. Now you take the next element that is in the front of the queue and then you visit all of its neighbors and push it in the back of the queue. So at each step, you will be able to visit all the neighbors of the current node. Then whatever node is next, you will be able to visit all the neighbors of that particular node. Right. So this is called breadth first search. Breadth first search. Why breadth? Because we are taking one node and traversing all around it, traversing through its breadth and all of its neighbors. Right. So with the help of this example, you must already have got an idea that how do we perform this programmatically. You can use a data structure like a queue because we have to append new nodes or new neighbors at the end and pop elements from the front. Right. Now one thing, one extra thing that you'll have to take care of is that let's say you were at two. Right. So you have already visited one. But when you ask two, what are your neighbors? Two will say that my neighbors are one and four. Right. So you will have to take care of this thing that if you have already visited one, you don't have to visit it again. Right. So if you are only going to push the new element into the queue, if it is not visited, right, you will have to take care of this particular thing. Now, this is all you have to do with this particular problem. You just have to implement BFS. So consider this particular video as more like a summary rather than a proper explanation. I would highly suggest that if you are studying BFS for the first time, then you can also check out other videos because like there will be many views on YouTube that must have explained this topic in a much better way. You can consider this particular video as a quick revision to what BFS is and then continue with your problem. So now let us have a look at the code. So what I've done is I've created a vector of integers called answer. So this is actually going to store my BFS traversal. Now we initialize my queue and push back this particular element zero to it, right? Because we are going to start our BFS from zero. Now I've created a visited vector of size b. So let me just also write visit it of zero to be equal to one, right? Because the first node is now visited. Now while my queue is not empty, what I'll do, I'll take out the node that is in front of the queue and I'll pop that particular element from the queue. So I just push back this particular node into my answer. I'm going to traverse through all the children of the current node. And if this child is not visited, I'm going to mark it as visited and push my new child into my queue, right? So at the end, you can just return your answer value and this is going to have your final part. So let me just uh, submit this and show you that this particular code works. So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and you will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of course and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.